It's five minutes with Dr. Beatty coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Hebert. This is Dr. Beatty, another episode of Limitless Longevity coming at you. And we have a timer down here just off camera, five minutes with Dr. Beatty, where I'm going to grill him all of the questions that the people want to know. So Dr. Beatty, start with us. You've told us a bit of your background. You, you grew up in Compton, you graduated, yes. but how and when did you know you wanted to be a doctor? Give us that story. Well, I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor until I was in my, actually going to my junior year of college at Occidental College. Because when I was a little kid, I liked Poindexter on cartoons. And he was blowing things up. <laughs> and so I wanted a chemistry set. And I was always mixing my mom's, you know, like different uh, uh, soap dispensers and chemicals <laughs> under the cabinet. And I'm surprised I didn't blow anything up. But, but I, was always, I was always interested in chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to college, I wanted to be a chemistry major. Oh, okay. So you could have been a mad scientist, but your junior year you opted for, did you, general practitioner doctor, you ended up going into anesthesiology, how did you get, walk us through that? Well, what happened, um, just before the summer, uh, going into my junior year, um, there, was, there was graduating seniors in chemistry, and so there were some um, uh, people that had come from Dow Chemicals, representatives, and they wanted to talk to the graduating seniors. So they met with all the chemistry majors. Mm. And I was in, in, in the audience, and so they said, is there any questions? I raised my hand and asked a question. Well, the guy who was the speaker for Dow Chemical, he was impressed by what I had said. He came to me later and said, hey, you want a summer job? Because he knew I wasn't <laughs> a senior. And I said, yeah, I took the summer job at Dow Chemical in Walnut Creek, California. This was back in 79. And I thought I was really interested in chemistry until I really had to do the job. Mm. I was doing the same reaction, same experiment, day after day after day, trying to perfect it for, <laughs> for a good 10 weeks. Yep. And I was smelling all this benzene, working on all these hoods, and I misinteracted with people. I said, no, this is not my personality. So when I went back to college, I went to Oxnell College, and I, my chemistry advisor was also our pre-med advisor. And so he was always saying, hey, you got great grades. I don't know why you never were interested in medical school. And when I told him, he almost fell out of his chair. And so <laughs> at that point, you know, that's where my focus became. And he was the one that I told him, I said, you know, I'm really interested in physiology and pharmacology. And he said to me, well, why don't you go to medical school instead of being a pharmacologist? Uh. So that's what happened. And he said, in fact, in order to be a pharmacologist, you have to go to med school for the first two years anyway. Okay. So that's how I got in that direction. And that's how I ended up in anesthesiology. Well, that's great, and I, I have to admit, the, the brief, my background in science, I was staring at a microscope at midnight, and I was like, I hate science now. So I have that similar background. I had that passion, changed my major. I get it. So you spent years as, uh, as a doctor doing anesthesiology, but one morning you wake up and say, no, I want to do wellness. Talk us through briefly about that shift in your, your business and perspective. Well, before I got to wellness, I started in primary care. Uh, so when I was doing anesthesiology, I started getting tired of the long nights and the weekends of call and never felt like it was my life was my own because I was always in the schedule when I was going to be on call again. And it was not unusual. Sometime I would be at the hospital 30 hours, 36 hours. I would cover uh, labor and delivery, OB. And women would have babies. They tend to have babies in the middle of the night. Yeah. And so I said, am I going to live this way for the rest of my life? I was at the time, I was 36, 37 years old. Mm -hmm. And so what I decided to do that I wanted to do a career change. And so I, I tried a few different things. I took some time off from medicine and then I came back in uh, 98. And at that time, I just said that if I go back to anesthesia, I'm not going to do it the same way. And so uh, what I began to do, I worked in urgent cares, I worked in different doctor's offices, and I said, wow, I really like this primary care. I started doing anesthesiology again. I did that up until 2012, but I was only working in, in surgery centers because they had a regular set hours, no weekends, no calls. And, um, but in 2012, I finally gave up the anesthesia part, and, but I had a, a strong passion for primary care. I was also doing some pain management because part of our training is pain management anesthesia, so I was doing that. But uh, uh, there was a sales rep, I think I mentioned it before, came into the office one day and said, you know, you're not really helping people to get well. Mm, yeah. And that's when I started attending conferences on wellness, and that was in 2013. Excellent. Hey, we've got about 30 seconds left on the five minute countdown. So if you're enjoying this content from Dr. Beatty, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Dr. Beatty, rapid fire, the man behind the job. 
Uh, what do you like to do when you're not being doctor? Oh, I like to play golf. I like to read. I like to ride my bike. I have an e-bike. I like to just sometimes just relax, go to a park and just chill out and just try to get, you know, re uh, rethink things through and, and just be in my own thoughts. I like that. Excellent. That's our timer. There was the five minutes going off. Dr. Beatty, I, I want to get your best piece of life advice for everybody watching, but before you give them that, I have one more question, even above the five minutes I have to ask. <laughs> What's with the stethoscope? Why this video? <laughs> Oh, this is where my knowledge and power comes from. <laughs> it's the stethoscope of yeah, power, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like a doctor when I wear this thing. <laughs> okay. But all joking aside, you know, the stethoscope is very central to my practice because I do actually physically examine the patient. Yeah. It's uh, more than just a tool. It's maybe a yeah. symbol of listening yes. to what's going on. Yes. So, Dr. Beatty, they're listening. They're all ears. They've enjoyed it. Thanks for giving us a little bit of insight into who you are Lay on them your best piece of advice. It can be in life, it can be in business, mm -hmm. but what's your word of encouragement to everybody today? Well, you know, for me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else be added unto you. And I look at that as the most profound thing that I can possibly do. Yep. And in part of that is also we need to seek our health. We need to seek those things that lead to abundant life. Yep. And so that would be my advice is seek God, seek health, seek abundant life. <laughs> I know. I, I'll, we'll end with the joke. Uh, I know people, uh, former pastors, unfortunately, that would say that the Bible says my body's a temple. I'm just trying to make it a bit bigger. <laughs> okay. It's not what we want to no, do here. That's not right. You don't need a big temple for Jesus. <laughs> Give him a healthy one to be in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of Limitless Long Longevity. This is Dr. Beatty. You've spent five minutes with him getting smarter, getting healthier. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you on the future videos.